it is that for the first time in many years, 140 recruits have been trained at the military barracks in the Tuli. They will be there for 120 days. But that is not what's significant about this. What is a milestone in my judgment about this is that for the first time in many, many years, first of all, probably as we, some of you in this room can remember, this is really the first time that Liberians are themselves undertaking this training. They are themselves doing this training. What it means is that we have invested in improving the capacities of our trainers. I think you refer to them in the military as drill sergeants, drill officers. Now they are bringing that training home. So you no longer have training by Denko, as much as we thank them for their efforts and their support, or by PAE. We are, have grown in confidence that Liberians are ever so increasingly taking over responsibilities which were once executed by our international partners. I think we should celebrate this. It is a new beginning. It testifies to this journey of improving our country, many sectors. And I know that sometimes we beat on our security people, but the fact that they are ever so increasingly stepping up to the plate, I think we should celebrate this opportunity. Now we understand these recruits got across all sorts of lines in the country, geographic, ethnic, political, all the lines. And so we want to encourage all of us to wish them well. While we're still talking about the armed forces, some of you raised legitimate concerns this week. That our soldiers, elements of the armed forces that are participating in peacekeeping mission in Mali have not been paid. I believe you have also reported the response of the Defense Ministry. I'd like to make just one clarification. It is, and some of you are concerned about that portion of their payment that's supposed to come from the UN. The practice, we understand, is that while you are on duty, you do not get all of the UN money that is supposed to give you for peacekeeping. A portion of that money is transferred from the UN to our mission in New York. And it is then transferred to the Central Bank of Liberia. We need to let you know that 80% of that pay for each of our soldiers serving gallantly and honorably is being kept at the central bank so that when these people return home, they have something to start with. Only 80%, the other 20% being given to them. 80% is being kept when they come home is for them. This is not the same pay that the government of Liberia is making for each soldier. And that pay, the families have access to it. Defense Ministry has assured us that all they are on top of it, they are on board with it, and everybody getting their money. We thank our, the families of those who are serving. We thank those who are serving. And we have yet to receive any report of misconduct. Some of you indicated wrongly, you know, we have a duty here to say the truth. Some of you indicated wrongly that Liberia has moved up three places. 
It is our duty to inform you that that is not the case. We actually moved down. Now, I know some of you may be surprised. Why? The information ministry is saying the government, we who say the government part, the information ministry say no. Yes, it is our duty to tell you the truth. We welcome the latest edition of the Corruption Perception Index. Now, while this is only one of a number of measures of corruption around the world, it is an important one. We, we see it as an important indicator of progress in fighting corruption. And we know it is based on perceptions that investors and other experts have about our country. Last year, Liberia rose from position 87th in the rankings to position 75th in the world. This year, we fell back to position 83rd, 83, out of 177 countries surveyed. This, for the government, is regrettable. It is not a big drop, but it is a drop that we are taking very seriously. We are pleased with the trend over the last five years, which is very strong. And we have indicated that we may ebb and we may flow. We may go up and we may come down in the rankings over time. But our focus has to be steadily on improving and enabling the fight against corruption. Continue as a government to prioritize and to lead. We also note with satisfaction that we came forth. In 2012, Liberia was the second least corrupt country in West Africa, contrary to some reports that we were the most corrupt country on the planet Earth. That was not true. And please stop reporting that. It just is not true. Last year, 2012, we were the second least corrupt country in West Africa. Second only to Ghana. This year, we dropped to joint fourth. Actually, if you think about it, yes, we're joint fourth. So there's Ghana, there's Senegal, then there's Liberia and Burkina Faso. So we could argue with the 10 least corrupt, we don't want to waste our time celebrating that. We want to and have committed ourselves to continue to make progress in this fight against corruption. It is everybody's business. Now, you may want to ask yourself, why did we fall in the rankings? Even though the fall was not so, and I know I will see your head, I'm like, we're falls. <laughs> Even though the fall is not so significant, continue as a government to prioritize and to lead. We also note with satisfaction that we came forth. In 2012, Liberia was the second least corrupt country in West Africa, contrary to some reports that we were the most corrupt country on the planet Earth. That was not true. And please stop reporting that. It just is not true. Last year, 2012, we were the second least corrupt country in West Africa, second only to Ghana. This year, we dropped to joint fourth. Actually, if you think about it, yes, we're joint fourth. So there's Ghana, there's Senegal, then details of the report. We found out that 
the World Economic Forum, for instance, which rated Liberia 52 in, in 2012, and rated us this time 30. These international groups offer schools on country, one to 100. 2012, the World Economic Forum gave us a score of 52. This year, they gave us a score of 30. That's significant. When we try to find out why, we found out that it was a survey on competitiveness that we lost. In terms of what are we doing against what other countries are doing? Not necessarily what we are not doing, but what other countries are doing compared to what we are doing. That's where we declined a lot. We are writing the World Economic Forum to give us, to share with us some of their ideas of what they think we can do and how we can do it better. Why do these rankings matter to Liberians? Why should it matter to us? Beyond what you will report, beyond what others will hear, we are a small country and we depend heavily on foreign investment and the goodwill of our partners. Nobody wants to invest in a country that is corrupt. We cannot, well, if you're working for the government, we encourage you to do your job diligently, to follow established procedures, PPCC, internal audit, all these measures that are being put in place to reduce vulnerabilities, individual vulnerabilities, we ask you to continue to follow these rules. And then we ask our citizens, please, don't pay a bribe to get a faster service. Follow the proper procedure and wait for your turn. If it means you will stay in line, stay in line. If it means the police will arrest you, let me arrest you. You will not die. Please. If you are running a business, pay your legitimate taxes. Don't do shock or they will find you out anyway. In fact, that shock or you're doing is now in the longer court. Because finance have changed all the rules, changed so many of these things, and we will, you will have to end up paying double. If somebody comes to inspect your books, don't say they're distracting the business. If they want to spend the whole week inspecting, they'll find one small office put in there and be inspected. Don't pay them. Don't bribe. You members of the press, librarians everywhere. If you see corruption, if you hear of corruption, if you know of corruption, report it. This fight against corruption is our fight. This fight against corruption enables all of us to be better. It's not just the government fight. We encourage you, as you have begun to do, to participate. So this year, we moved from 75th, we've gone to 83rd. We moved from being 11th in, the, in Africa last year. Now we are 14th in Africa. Really, it's not a bad place to be, but it's not where we want to be. The president drew attention to the fact that Indiscipline is creeping upon our society. People know the rules they are supposed to follow to resolve a grievance, to settle a disagreement. And what's worse, people are requesting privileges, not rights, privileges. And they want to do so referring the threats of violence or the exercise of violence in, in demanding privileges. Now, this government will continue to listen to all of its citizens. 
We must listen to all of our citizens. It is a duty we have. But we have a higher duty to ensure peace and security. All of us as citizens, members of the press, we have that duty as well. Because if we will not stand before our courts, and some of us will in, in the course of our lives, relatives, friends, because we live in a society of law and order, to resolve issues, we must end up in courts. Sometimes even if we don't like it, so we have to build our courts to, to enable procedures that facilitate our courts gaining credibility as the proper venue for the resolution of civil conflicts and disputes. Our citizen element assigned to many of our courts, and that's why they call jury. They are members of the public brought into the court to make decisions. We need to work together. Some people thought, oh, they got all that because somebody say they get taped against the president, so they want to shut it down and so we can hear it. Play any tape you want play. Any tape you want play, play it. But we know some people set him trap. One condition to deny extradition that when people say the, the whole ground spoil against me now, the people have opinionated against me in the public. Where do we draw jury from? From the public. But the whole public not declare me guilty. The government on a massive campaign. They will not say they the one injected the argument and the government responded to the argument. And then the same people are jumping on it, you know, swallowing those tricks. Sometimes you wonder, where are we going? Preserving the courts, my people, is a duty of all of you. Preserving the integrity of the rule of law in our country. It's a duty that all of us So, we had a heavy week. We had a heavy week. Let's wrap it up with two of our finest sons. It's not my pleasure. So who's going? Our court. Well, they set up in the, in the caucus. So we have, it's now my pleasure to invite Honorable Harrison Kambi. <laughs>